Hey guys, Pastor Jurgen here. I'm so glad you're tuning into one of our powerful messages that is guaranteed to absolutely elevate your life to another level. At Awaken, we only want to preach fresh, real, powerful to help you grow stronger in your walk with God, develop your faith so you can take more territory. I'm praying that God blesses you and enriches your soul as you listen to this amazing word from God. God bless you. I do want to share a message this morning. I believe God put on my heart. It's, 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 a fr it's fresh. Uh, and it's the title of the message this morning is Face to the Ground. Face to the Ground. Face to the Ground. And uh, let's just go, we're going to go through a large portion of scripture and uh, we're going to draw some nuggets out of um, this, uh, this passage. I believe God is going to speak to us and help us unlock some areas of our lives because of what he wants to do with us. Come on, how many of you know that God has a purpose for us? He has an assignment for us. He has a, there's a destiny awaiting us. So... Um, but before that, I do want to honor my wife, babe. You're so beautiful. Come on, honor my beautiful wife, Natalie Ray. Contreras, I love you, baby. So let's go to 2 Chronicles chapter 20. We're going to start in verse 1. And this is the story of King Jehoshaphat. And King Jeho Jehoshaphat, the Bible says, did right in the eyes of the Lord. Therefore, he prospered. You see the kings and the chronicles, there are some kings that follow the ways of God, some kings that didn't follow the ways of God. And those that followed the ways of the Lord, God prospered them and blessed them. So here you have King Jehoshaphat did what was right in the sight of the Lord for the most part. And we'll start in verse 1. It happened after this that the people of Moab with the people of Ammon and others with them besides the Ammonites came to battle against Jehoshaphat. Somebody say battle. battle. Came to battle against Jehoshaphat. Then some came and told Jehoshaphat, saying, A great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea, from Syria. And they're in Hezazon, Tamar, which is en -Jedi. Came to battle against Jehoshaphat, and a great multitude is coming against you. Have you ever found yourself in a battle? How about, how many of you, by the show of hands, you, you'll be like, you know what, I myself right now, I find myself in a battle. I'm contending for some things, I'm believing for some things, I'm, I'm like, you know, wrestling some areas of my life. And, uh, and what I want us to understand is the, is the foundation of this message is that we are in a spiritual battle. What we read in the Old Testament is oftentimes an illustration of what goes on in the New Testament, but in the spirit. What happens in the Old Testament and the New Testament is now spiritual. In the New Testament now today, we find ourselves in a spiritual battle. That's why Paul would say, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers in the kingdom of darkness. It's, there's a battle. The Bible says that the weapons of our warfare are not, are not carnal, but mighty in God. Why, why would Paul use that kind of language like, hey, put on the whole armor of God. And, and he tells us about the helmet of salvation, the belt of truth, the breastplate of the righteousness. Because he understands that we are in a spiritual battle. So, so it, 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 understanding this, I'm like, man, then why am I shocked when I find myself in a battle? Why do I seem so surprised or why do I, you know, get a little depressed or feel sorry for myself when I feel, when I, when I look up and I, I sur I'm surrounded by enemies. I'm like, what is going on? God, did you forget about me? God is like, no, this is part of the point. This is, this is what it's like. We're in a battle. But what's, what's more powerful is that Jesus tells his disciples Behold, I've given you authority over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So as you step into a battle, you understand that Jesus has given us authority over all the power of the enemy. Then I know that as I step in the battle, I will conquer. I will win. Come on, as we step into a battle, how many of you are thankful that we're more than conquerors through him that loved us? Come on, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So as, as, as we, you know, go through this message, it's, it's very good to, for us to understand that we find ourselves in a battle. But as we find ourselves in a battle, we know that we have authority over all the power of the enemy. And my faith can be, come on, in our God, in Jesus Christ, that he conquered, he went to the cross to give me the victory. Amen. So I'm, I'm like, you know, this, I've been praying and prophesying for two years. We've, we've been in business. We started this company in 2013. 
And I've been praying, prophesying, declaring growth. And, and God said, I wish I could show you the graph. We've seen the blessing of God miraculously just like, you know, growing our company. And then 2021, 22, we see a bit of a decline. 23, you see another, a little bit of another decline. It so happened after we ran for office. So, you know, somebody say battle. Somebody say attacks. Come on. The enemy didn't like that. So we see a little bit of a decline. But I'm like, you know what? I remember just crying out to God. Come on, Lord, and praying, prophesying, certain amount of growth. Then we hit this year, and the company starts taking off again. And, and I see the, gro the growth and the numbers that I was praying, prophesying two years before. I'm like, come on, God is, come on. We, are, we have, have authority over all the power of the enemy. God is blessing. is amazing. But then as I'm enjoying this growth, I, I get this letter from, um, from Customs. Because uh, I'm in the, in the customs and logistics industry. I get this letter from customs with literally false accusations. And it really hit me. I, I felt like, I don't know if you've ever been like, you know, like you've literally felt the spirit of fear just like, like punch you in the gut or like knocking on the doors of your heart. You know, like I feel tempted to give into a spirit of fear and go down this spiral where I'm like, it's going to be hard to get me out of this hole. So I get this letter and uh, th these false accusations with, which would, you know, with using language that could jeopardize my license. And I'm like, oh my gosh. But as I zoom out, I'm like, why am I shocked? Why am I surprised that as I'm prospering and God hates it when we prosper. I'm sorry, the enemy hates it when we prosper. <laughs> yeah, it's just to see if you're paying attention. You know? <laughs> Amen. Amen. The, the enemy hates it when we prosper. The enemy hates our guts because we were created in his image and likeness. So when you begin to prosper, of course, there's going to be times where you find yourself surrounded by enemies and attacked. And I'm like, what, what? So I'm zooming out. I'm like, oh, my gosh. So here's King Jehoshaphat. And he's surrounded by enemies. So let's keep reading. Verse 3, and Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord. Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim the fast throughout all Judah. So Judah gathered together to ask help from the Lord and from all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. Here you have a king who's been experiencing the blessing of God and prosperity. And the Bible says that he feared. He feared. But yet he gave himself to seek the Lord. What? do we do when we find ourselves experiencing just a little bit of fear how, how do we respond how do we react do we do we just give in and 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 go into a you know a, a spiral of of anxiety and and do we and worries and 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 do we allow ourselves to get into a hole or are we like king jehoshaphat and we just give ourselves to seek the lord Seek the Lord. See, fear is like an alarm system. It's like we were, we were remodeling our house, and uh, my, my smoke detectors were like super sensitive, like, like little demons, okay? Amen. And, and we're redoing the floors, and it was super dusty. And all of a sudden, they all decide to go off. And it's so annoying. Has that ever happened to you? Or like, how about like middle of the night, the battery is like goes off? And it's always at 3 a.m. It's like, why, you know? So they go off, and now we have to identify which ones are the sensor all over the house, you know? It's like the whole house is, is like, uh, uh, uh. I'm like, oh. so we're all looking. And by the way, I wasn't there, so this is a story my wife told me. <laughs> I know, I know. I know. Hey, come on. A church is fresh, real, and powerful, okay? Just being authentic, amen, and genuine. So, so my wife tells me the house is going crazy and, you know, thankfully we had some people, they're helping us and, you know, they find all the detectors and they just disconnected them and, okay, now we have peace. And it took me like months to put them back. I'm like, I don't want those little devils in my house, amen. <laughs> but, but you see, fear can be like that. It's like an alarm system. It's like, a, it's, 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 you have to, like, once you, once you hear, feel the alarm, like, oh my gosh, I'm feeling fearful. It's like, you have to identify, where's the fear coming from? And as I identify where the fear is coming from, is it finances? Is it, is it, you know, for, is it marriage? Is it feeling, am I feeling unloved? Am I feeling uh, like God won't provide? Am I feeling like, like, you know, 
you name it. But as I, as I identify the fear, then I set myself like King Jehoshaphat to seek the Lord. To seek the Lord. So I told you, get this letter. And, uh, and I tell my wife, I'm like freaking out, you guys. I'm like, what the heck? You know, I know I seem very like low-key and stuff, but I can get emotional at times. <laughs> I can get emotional at times. And, and I, I just, I feel emotions very intensely at times. Okay. 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 So I'm like, and I'm probably the only one here at the Bressy campus. You're all very low-key, even kill. <laughs> Nobody has intense emotions or feelings. Nobody, yeah. So I, I come home, I tell my wife, babe, I was freaking out. But, but you, know, I've, you know, I've been a Christian for 20 years and, and, and I know what happens when I give myself to seek the Lord. And I said, babe, I'm going to lock myself in the room and I'm just going to worship and pray because I need God right now. And I remember just getting in the room and I just locked it and I just put on some worship, loud worship. And I just literally faced to the ground. I began to pray and I began to worship. And I began to hear. See, what happens when you put yourself in an environment where you're, when you're in the presence of God, that he begins to bring clarity to every situation. And I began to see what all the promises he'd given me. I began to feel the, the strength of God and the faith of God. I began to feel like, like literally the Holy Spirit. And, and uh, like his, he was allowing the roots of my heart to go deeper into Christ, into the kingdom. How many of you know that trees don't go deep unless you find yourself in a drought or going through a difficult time? And yet we want to be stronger. We want to be, you know, you, we, God, we want more, more influence. Okay, let me allow for your roots to go just a little deeper, okay? So I find myself just praying and worshiping, and I was, I was contending and, 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 and praising God and worshiping. I was waiting for the weight that I was carrying to shift upon the Lord. That's why, that's why the Bible says, cast your cares upon the Lord because he cares for you. And more often than not, because we find ourselves in a culture and time where, where we're so rushed and, and we got to go from here to there that, that we go and we try and pray and have our devotional, but we're still carrying the weight. But our job as believers that are taking territory is to pray and contend and stay in it and pray in tongues and declare and believe until you feel like the weight has been shifted. And when the weight has been shifted, then you can get up and be like, my God. That's why people can look at believers and be, how can you in the midst of chaos have so much peace and so much joy and so full of faith? Because I'm not the one who's carrying the weight. I shifted the weight. I shifted the weight. So I get up. It's like, it's like, like. I don't know, my wife might have thought it was bipolar or something. Because I get out of the room, I'm like, I'm good. Here's King Jehoshaphat said, he, he feared, but he set himself to, to seek the Lord. To seek the Lord. You know, I'm just sensing there's some of us here this morning that I feel the call from the Holy Spirit. That he's calling you to, to, to go to a new level of seeking the Lord. And seeking the Lord in your own time when no one's watching, when the doors are shut. Come on, in your own prayer closet, just seeking the Lord. Imagine what could happen, come on, at the Blessy Ranch campus of Awakened Church. If you had a room full of people that gave themselves to seek the Lord. Come on, Tuesday morning, seeking the Lord. On your own, seeking the Lord. Come on, you're going through a battle or struggle and you give yourself to seek the Lord. And you pray and prophesy and you pull down strongholds. Come on, somebody. So Judah gathered together to ask help from the Lord and from all the cities of Judah they came to seek the Lord. Verse 5, then Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah in Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, oh Lord God, now mind you, he was feeling afraid. We just read that, right? He feared, but he set himself to seek the Lord. So here he starts praying. So verse 5, then Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, Oh Lord God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? And do you not rule over all the kingdoms of the nations in your hand? Is there not power and might so that no one is able to withstand you? Are you not our God who drove out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and gave it to the descendants of Abraham, your friend forever, and they dwell in it and have built you a sanctuary in it for your name? 
saying, if disaster comes upon us, sword, judgment, pestilence, or famine, we will stand before this temple and in your presence, for your name is in this temple, and cry out to you in our affliction, and you will hear and save. And now, here are the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, whom you would not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and did not destroy them. Here they are, rewarding us. By coming to throw us out of your, our possession, which you have given us to inherit. Oh, our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us, nor do we know what to do. But our eyes are upon you. Our eyes are upon you. In other words, King Jehoshaphat is saying, this giant seems too big for me, but my eyes are upon you. This problem seems so ginormous, but my eyes are upon you. Come on. My finances seem impossible, but my eyes are upon you. My marriage seems like it's going nuts, but my eyes are upon you. Come on. When you find yourself in the battle, in the middle of the struggle, and you allow yourself to zoom out and see, put your eyes up on the Lord come on somebody that's when you see the victory the wisdom of Jehoshaphat he's like I, I see I'm surrounded by these enemies but but my eyes are upon the Lord such powerful and profound wisdom yet so simple if I can just get myself to keep my eyes on Jesus and on his word and Holy Spirit will you lead me and guide me but I, I want you to see, notice to the, the, how he changes his uh, tonality. He fears, he begins to pray, and then you begin to see this boldness. Will you not judge them? Yeah. What, what happens when we set ourselves to seek the Lord yeah. and our eyes are upon the Lord yeah. is that we go from fear to boldness, from fear to faith. Yeah. Can we go from weakness to strength because it's supernatural? It's like we exchange the weight that we're carrying and we shift it onto God and God in return. It's like this divine transaction where we receive this superpower. Come on, that in the midst of the struggles and, the, and whatever we're believing for, we can still stand strong and believe, come on, and, and courageous. And we don't have to be like the world. The easiest thing is to just go off the rails and, and just make stupid bad decisions because I was caring so much, I was trying to cope. That's the easiest thing we can do. But if we set ourselves to seek the Lord, come on, he's the one that will sustain us and keep us, come on, and strengthen us, amen. Verse 13, now all Judah with their little ones, their wives and their children stood before the Lord. Then the spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of Metaniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph. Can you imagine if, if when we introduce people, we're still like that today? Here's Pastor Samuel, the son of Pastor Samuel, and the son of da da da, and the son of da da da, and the son of da da da, son of da da. You know, if, if someone were to introduce me, it'd be like, here comes Marco, the son of Marco, and, and it would stop there because my dad didn't know who his dad was, okay? <laughs> <laughs> it's not funny. That's all right. You can laugh at my pain. Amen. <laughs> but I have a heavenly father. Amen. <laughs> Come on, king of kings and lord of lords. Come on, we carry, there's royalty in our DNA. That's why we can stand in the midst of a battle. Come on, as kings and priests and declare with authority. Come on, the word of the Lord and prophesy into our future. Amen. So the Spirit of the Lord comes upon Jehaziel, verse, uh, let's go 15, and he said, listen, all you of Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you, King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow, go down against them, they will surely come up by the ascent of Ziz, and you will find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. You will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourselves. Here comes the word of the Lord telling Jehoshaphat, position yourselves. 
Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord is with you. Position yourselves. Somebody say, position yourself. Positioning is so powerful. Positioning can either back your faith and expectation or cancel your faith and expectation. Let me explain. If I was, you know, if I was, if I had faith and expectation for a six-pack, okay, if I had faith and expectation for a six-pack, but I positioned myself next to the fridge, having ice cream every night, those ice cream bars, Hagen dazs ice cream bars with chocolate and almonds. And And those demonic chocolate covered almonds from Costco that it's like you can't have just one of them or two it's like it's like I become possessed and I look oh Trader, Trader Joe's peanut butter cups oh it's like Netflix and carbs amen and I look to the container, oh, that little box of the, and, and it's like empty. I'm like, what happened? No, my six pack. <laughs> but if I position myself next to the fridge, then my positioning cancels my expectation of a six pack. But if I position myself in a place where I'm working out, I'm watching my diet, I'm saying all oh, the ice cream, the chocolate covered almonds, and I'm, and I'm determined to, then I can stand, come on, before God, and my positioning backs my faith and expectation. Right. If, if, I was, if, if I was believing in, in faith for a good marriage, but I position myself in a place where I'm just a jerk to my wife, I don't give her any quality time, I don't listen, I'm rushing everything, you know, we go on a date and, you know, I'm just thinking date is about food, amen, and dinner. But date is about quality time and spending time together. And, and you know, and I never ask forgiveness and, and I never become, I'm never like leading like Jesus and humbling myself. And I'm just prideful and like, no, you did this and you did that and we fight. Then my positioning, my belief for a, new, a good marriage, but if I position myself, it cancels my expectation. But if I position myself in a place where, you know, I'm listening and I'm kind, and I humble myself. I'm such a good listener, amen. <laughs> and I take my wife on a date, and we spend time, and we, and we go on walks. And now I can stand before God in my position like, God, come on. I'm, believe, I'm declaring and prophesying a good marriage, come on. Quality time, great intimacy, all the things, amen. Now watch how Jehoshaphat positions himself. The Lord says, position yourselves, verse 18, and Jehoshaphat bowed his face, his head with his face to the ground. And all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem bowed before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. So Jehoshaphat hears the word of the Lord, and, and the word of the Lord is position yourselves. And he, he didn't try to go do it on his, on his own strength or, or just try to figure stuff out and be strategic about how, was gonna, you know, how am I going to uh, uh, conquer these enemies. No, he positions himself by, by bowing down and putting his face to the ground and he begins to worship and he begins to pray. And he begins to cry out to God. And then we keep reading, literally, the Lord comes and he saves them and defeats the enemy because he cracked the code. And he positioned himself in a place where he was, he, was, he was tapping into the heavens and partnering with the Holy Spirit and prophesying and declaring. And he stood still and saw the salvation of the Lord. Are you with me? Okay, I want to spend the rest of my, our time here together. And, and can we, is it okay if we go a little deeper? I, I want to look into what goes on when, when we put our face to the ground. What happens in the spirit. H how can we go to a place, go from where we are now to a place where we live a lifestyle of continuous answers to our prayers. We, we live in a place where what we pray and we declare and prophesy, we see God just answering our prayers left and right. And things happen and open doors. Come on, how many of you would like to live a life like that? 
But you see a bit of a pattern here. Elijah, the Bible says when Elijah, when Elijah had an encounter with Ahab and the prophets of Baal and, and he calls on the, on the fire of God and, and God burns the sacrifice and, you know, all the prophets of Baal die. And, and then he goes, he says, hey, I hear the sound. Uh, I see the, the, the sound. I hear the sound of rain, the abundance of rain. The Bible says that, I want, I want you to see this. I think we have it up there. It's in 1 Kings. 1 Kings chapter 18, verses 41 to 44. Then Elijah said to Ahab, go up, eat and drink, for there is the sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel. And he bowed down on the ground and put his face between his knees. Now we see a pattern here. There's something that happens when we bow head down. This is metaphorically, okay. This is how you pray. You can be standing, walking, or whatever. But it's a posture of our hearts where we put ourselves before God and we begin to pray. So we're going to dive deep, a little deeper into this. So let's, let's go to Mark 11, verse 22 to 24. Mark 11, verses 22 to 24. So Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. Somebody say faith. faith. Have faith in God, for as surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Have faith in God. For as surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, come on, somebody say enemy. Says to this enemy or mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart but believes that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Are we reading the same scripture? It's like if, if Jesus is saying this, why do I find myself sometimes living a life that does not reflect what Jesus said? He said he, if he believes in his heart, does not doubt, he will have whatever he says. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Now how many of you would say, my gosh, that's my life right there. Every time I pray, I see God answering every prayer. Then either Jesus is a liar... Or we haven't tapped into a new level, a new lifestyle of answers to our prayers. Come on, can we go a little deeper? Here's the first thing Jesus says, have faith in God. Have faith in God. What, what, what does faith look like? What is faith? Come on, talk to me, somebody. What is faith? Actions, believing, hoping. You can't see it. What was it? Trusting. Trusting. Great. The first concept God introduces or Jesus introduces here is faith. Now let's break down faith. What is faith? Let's go to Hebrews 11 chapter 1. Hebrews 11 verse 1. And it reads, now faith is a substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of of things not seen. Faith is the substance, the ten, a substance is something that's tangible of what we hope for. Yet hope for, hoping is not something that's tangible. But faith is, this, is something tangible of something you're hoping for is an evidence of something you cannot see. Okay, go on. The, the word substance in the Greek is assurance or title deed. Faith is the title that or deed or assurance of what we hope for. It's something that you can touch, something that you are tan that is tangible, something that you feel in your heart, something that grows in your heart. Now, the prophetic comes usually in the form of a seed. Okay, every time you get a vision or a dream or a thought or a desire or something you're praying for or believing for is like a seed that gets sown in your heart. It's like. Um, It's like a seed. It's like a seed that gets sown in your heart. Now, what do you do with a seed? Jesus said faith is like a mustard seed. Okay, the prophetic, the visions, the thoughts, the dreams that we have come, in, come like a seed in our hearts. Now, what do we do with seeds? What's, what needs to happen to a seed? It needs to grow. So faith is like a seed Okay, when, you, when something gets deposited in your spirit, it's like a seed that goes into the womb of your spirit, okay, that needs to grow. Now, what do you mean by that? 
How does a baby grow in the womb? What happens in the womb? There's incubation that takes place in the womb. Incubation. Let me read you the definition of incubation real quick. I think we have it up there. To sit on eggs as to hatch by the warmth of the body. To maintain something such as an embryo or a chemically active system under conditions favorable for hatching, development, or reaction. To maintain at a favorable temperature and in other conditions promoting development. To maintain at a favorable temperature and in other conditions promoting development. When there's a seed that gets deposited in your heart through a vision, a dream, a prophecy, a word. You read your Bible on your own and God gives you a desire. It's like a seed that gets deposited in your heart. Now my job is to, to incubate that seed and let it grow. For as the Bible says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. That substance comes like a seed that needs to grow until it becomes a substance. Are you with me? I was um, in uh, last year, August of last year. We were we were at uh, at East Lake at the East Lake campus for seven years, uh, year, close to seven years. And, um, and, and I'm praying and literally face to the ground because I'm finding some challenges in business and and uh, finances and literally face to the ground and the Holy Spirit just comes and he gives me a vision of, of San Diego and that, that he was, that we were supposed, my wife and I were supposed to move to a little more central location. Now that was a big shocker because that was not in the plans. It's not something where we talked about. It's not what we had talked about for, you know, for our lives in the future. So I see this and I'm like, oh my gosh. So I run down, I run down Sarah and said, babe, God spoke to me. I believe we're supposed to move. She's like, oh my gosh, I'm feeling the same thing. So we began, we, we sought wisdom and counsel. And we just said, here's what we're feeling to our pastors. And, and you know, just if you, we can, you can partner with us. And, you know, what do you guys feel? Would you affirm this? It's good to have pastors you allow into your life to speak into your life. Especially if you're a part of a church. I said, oh my gosh, this is God. So now, mind you, that came like a seed that was deposited in my heart. It didn't happen like this. It didn't happen like I got this vision and then all of a sudden I sold my house. I found a house and like the transaction happened the next day. It happened. No. It came like a seed. So now my job is I receive the seed. My job is to start incubating. And incubating. Create a, the, the appropriate temperature for the seed that was sown. Now watch this. Elijah was with face down, face to the ground bow down praying and prophesying and he tells the servant go and see if you see the the cloud if you see a cloud the servant goes he says no cloud he sends him again go and see if you see a cloud because I've seen it in my spirit even though I see it I don't see it in the natural so he's praying he says go and go and see if you see a cloud the servant comes back no cloud and he keeps praying and believing go again and he comes back again go again come four five six times imagine if Elijah would have aborted the seed that was deposited in his heart before it grew until the manifestation so he tells the servant go again because I've seen it in my spirit I guess I'm trying to talk to some people that have seen some things in your spirit that you haven't seen come to fruition but the Holy Spirit is here to remind you keep on praying keep incubating keep believing you will see the cloud come on for the sound of an abundance of rain is coming so the servant comes he said I see it what happens to most of us is that as we get a seed deposited in our hearts in the, the womb of our spirit, we get tired of praying and we abort the seed and we keep on going and we never see change in our lives. How many of us have, how many of us have gotten a dream, vision, prophecy or whatever and, and you start so, so fervent and so passionate believing and praying but because hope deferred makes the heart sick, sick we stop praying and believing and we abort the seed. What if Elijah would have given up after the sixth time that the servant said, hey, there's nothing. No, Elijah had seen it in his spirit. It was his job to incubate the seed that was growing in his heart. So God tells us, hey, we get a vision of you, you're about to move. So, so we start, we have the conversations. Now my job was to incubate. So. We start driving around and we see a house that we just, my gosh, this is exactly what we're believing for. And we're like, 
well, let's just wait. I'm like, let's just wait and see what happens. Let's try to, we put our house on the market and, and nothing happens. And now houses that we sold in the past, um, we, they would sell like the first weekend, like literally, you know, boom, done. Okay, great. So nothing happens. So then the house we're believing for gets, gets removed from the, from the, from the market. Like, like we think it's being, it's sold. So then they put it back again on Monday and uh, Natalie says, we have to put an offer now because somebody's going to take it. I'm like, okay, fine. Let's just do it. So we put an offer, accept our offer. And they gave us 30 days, 30 days to, because we gave, our offer was uh, contingent upon the sale of our house. They gave us 30 days to get an offer. Nothing happens for 25 days. 20, day 30. Day 30. But guess what? And uh, we were incubating and praying and believing and believing in faith. How do you incubate? To incubate, you have to get a clear-cut, envision a clear-cut objective. And you see it in your spirit. And it's something that has to be birthed, listen, it has to be birthed in the spirit, conceived in the spirit. This is not a name it and claim it type of, of theology. Oh, I see a Ferrari. Oh, I, and I'm going to incubate a Ferrari. Now, if God spoke to you about a Ferrari, hey, that's something else. But as, as God speaks to you, something gets conceived in the spirit. Now our job is to incubate. And I remember seeing that house. I put the Im a picture of that house on my iPad, on my laptop, on my phone because I was seeing it and incubating. I was believing that God had something for us that he promised to us. Day 30, we get an offer. Now this is in the midst of the, the interest rates being as high as they could be. And we were incubating. Can I tell you what I was incubating? Because we lived in East Lake, and it was, you know, the only area where they have custom homes. I was incubating a very rich, wealthy Mexican, okay, <laughs> that had to live in East Lake because of work. And, uh, and, and you know, they were just going to love the house so much that they were going to pay whatever money they had to pay. That's what I was playing and believing, okay. Day 30, here comes this very wealthy Mexican <laughs> that... I got it wrong by a little bit. They had to live in Eastlake because of their kids and the, the school they were going to. And, and they were going to live there for five years. And then we begin to negotiate. Now, negotiating was a whole other story. It was beautiful. God showed up. And we were able to, to sell the house at the highest value of a home in Chula Vista, in the history of Chula Vista. In the midst, in the midst of the economic climate that we find ourselves in. Somebody say God. We'll end with this. Go to Genesis chapter 1, okay? Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. This is how the Bible begins. This is how God chose to introduce his message to us. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Somebody say create. Okay, go on. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the waters, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. Go back to verse 2. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was in the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. You know what the Hebrew definition for the word hovering is? Incubating. The Spirit of God was incubating over the face of the waters, creating the right temperature so that God the Father could come, and declare the word, say, let there be light. And there was light. We were created in his image and likeness. And we have, God has given us grace and abilities in the supernatural that we can stand strong before the Lord and partner with the Holy Spirit. And as he gives us a seed, we just incubate. And we incubate. And we pray. And we prophesy. And we envision what God has promised us like a bulldog. Nothing's going to stop me. Nothing's going to slow me down. I'm going to be relentless and resilient, believing, hanging on to the promises of God until that thing grows in my heart and I can stand still and declare the word of the Lord. Come on, can we just stand as we close this morning? We're going to a new level of answers to our prayers. And I just want you to close your eyes because I believe the Holy Spirit wants to pray for some people this morning. This is what I felt so clearly as I was praying for today. Two things. There's some of us that have allowed 
the wrong seeds to be planted in the womb of our spirit. What do I mean by that? Seeds like, I'll never have a house. My marriage will never work. I'll never have a baby. I'll never have a promotion. I'll never do this. I'll never do that. Seeds that have been, and listen, God has given us the ability to incubate. And we've been incubating the wrong thing. Envisioning the wrong thing. And it takes us to a place of anxiety and depression, despair, sadness, deep sadness, because we don't see a way out. But what I believe the Holy Spirit is wanting to do this morning is to touch us, uproot those seeds, and give us the ability to incubate what God sees for us. If that's you, I just want you to come to the front because I want to pray for you. If that's you, you've been allowing the wrong seeds, come on, to be planted in the womb of your spirit, in your heart. And you've been incubating the wrong things. We've been having wrong thinking. Listen, I just literally corrected myself this morning. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm incubating the wrong future. If that's you, I want you to come to, I want to pray for you. So I'm just going to ask you if you can close your eyes and come on, we're going to begin to incubate the right things. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You know, I want you to specifically focus on and allow allow yourself to partner with the Holy Spirit. He's the one that leads us into all truth, okay? And I believe he's bringing to the surface right now what some of the, the biggest giants you're facing right now, the mountains. And, and, and I want you to see and partner with the Holy Spirit. And I want you to literally remove that vision, the wrong seed that you've been seeing and meditating on that is literally draining you of your energy and your joy and your hope that is affecting your marriage, is affecting your relationships. It's causing you to look down instead of looking up. And I want you to literally physically come on in your mind, in your spirit, remove it and allow the Holy Spirit to give you the right vision for your life. If it's finances, come on, if it's your marriage, if it's your children, if you're believing for a spouse, whatever it is that you're believing for, and I want you to see it and rest on it. And I want you to see it. Come on, Rabba Shende Rebo Bosota Ramama Sende. Come on, Rabba Shete Remo. I want you to see it. I want you to see it. I want you to see it. Come on, Rabba Sete Rebo Shonda. We can see so clearly, Holy Spirit. When we're in your presence, we can see clearly. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Come on, for me, I see, I see uh, a great relationship with the chiefs and the supervisors of, of customs. And they're going to see that what their, their letter was false and, and the claims they're making are false. And I see us just literally shaking hands and, and smiling and building a great relationship with this new administration. And, and I'm going to become like an advisor to them where, where I'm able to, to give them insight into the industry and great relationship. They're going to see really the integrity of our company. I see that. I see it so clearly. Come on, for you, what about you? What do you see? Come on, what do you see? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Come on. We just remove right now the wrong thinking. Come on, the wrong incubation, and we plant the seeds of faith. Come on, the seeds that God, come on, has for us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Come on, in our finances. Come on, I remove, I bind right now demonic lies of the enemy, and I lose the blessing of God. You know what, I'm sensing that there's some of us that because of our, our lineage, our heritage, our ancestry, there have been some generational things that have been passed on to us, but I right now under the power and the Spirit of God, I remove them in the Spirit right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, I bind it right now and I lose the blessing of God. Come on, I lose the ancestry of God. Come on, the, the power of the Holy Spirit to fill our minds and fill our thoughts so we can partner with Him. Come on and take territory here. Come on, fulfill our assignment and the destiny in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We love you. We praise you. We worship you. We say yes to you. 
Come on, we say yes to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow, what an amazing word. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Hey, listen, for more information about our church, go to www.awakenchurch.com or subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already and download our app. It is amazing. It is chock full of incredible messages, information about upcoming events, and you can even support our ministry if you feel so inclined. We loved having you with us today. We look forward to seeing you again. God bless you. Live a life that is transformative. Bye for now.